Hello everyone. We are live from Incarnate Town. Today we are going to be covering Directional Shadows, or more commonly known as Cast Shadows. Cast Shadows are simply shadows that are cast from an object onto a surface from a light source. So that's what we're going to be covering today. Um, we are going to be covering the basics, so nothing advanced, and we are not going to be including perspective shadows because the fantasy battle map style, the style we're using for this particular stream, is a top-down two-dimensional orthographic projection, meaning there is no perspective. So there is really no need to add perspective to the shadows as well. Now that's something that you can do, but for the most part, the shadows will be orthographic, just no perspective included okay now if you want to follow along in today's stream you can totally clone and edit this map that link is provided in the chat at the top it's just been pinned by philip thank you philip so go ahead and click that link if you want to follow along in today's stream we're going to be covering three things i'm going to be showing you how to do shadows or cast shadows on exteriors interiors and how to do organics like the trees and the bushes stuff like that so we're going to cover that all right so let's first go over some basics about light and shadow, because it's gonna be very difficult to do directional or cast shadows without knowing just a little bit of the basics, okay? So there are three requirements for shadows to work, and you're gonna have a light source that's gonna be natural or artificial. So the sun or candles and things like that. Those are gonna be your light source. There's gonna to need to be required objects, object or object, single or plural, it doesn't matter. Here I'm using a crate as an example. You're also gonna need a surface, and that surface is what the shadow is going to be cast upon. So those three things are required. Now in this diagram, I'm using kind of a side view, but we will translate this diagram to top down just so that you have an idea of what we're talking about here. So let's go and open this up. Let's talk about the basics. Now, most battle maps are going to have just straight top down. This is going to be around noon. The sun is up high, directly above in the sky, and it's just going to cast like basically a what's called a drop shadow or what we call ambient occlusion. If I go off of here, let me just close this up and go back here, and you'll kind of see that there are these hard shadows right here around the edge of this roof right here. That's going to be your ambient occlusion or your drop shadow. Because the sun is directly down, shadows are not going to be cast from left to right, up or down, or anything like that. Just completely straight down. So just kind of factor that in, and that's going to happen a lot here. Now, the, the reason why you might want to add directional shadows or cast shadows is if you're trying to emphasize to your players that it is a certain time of day. A good example of that would be, let's say that you have to defeat this demon or this creature or whatever it might be, but they're only vulnerable at twilight or dawn or a particular time of the night or day. Okay, and so that way you can portray to the players a certain time of the day. That's really the main reason why you might want to consider adding cast shadows or you just like doing different types of shadows in your in your battle maps. But for the most part, I generally don't use it unless I'm trying to convey very clearly to my players. It's a special time of the day. Okay, so let's go back to the light and the shadow diagram real quick. And so the easiest one it's just a simple noon. Now, as you continue, the sun begins to rise or go down, just depends on what is east and west here. What's gonna happen is, is the shadow is gonna be affected. It's gonna cast a longer shadow. So the more and more that it gets closer to the horizon, the more and more the shadow, the more elongated the shadow is. So if I was to go like closer to right here, the shadow is gonna be much more elongated. So that is where you show different types of day of the day is by showing a cast shadow. Okay, so anywhere I put it here along the sun's route, this is going to create an elongated shadow. Remember, straight down, just ambient occlusion or a drop shadow. There's no need to add any kind of cast shadow to it. So now the easiest way to do cast shadows is when it's in between about mm, 10 and 11 and one o'clock. There's not much of a shadow that's being cast because it's so close to noon. And so you can just use an object shadow of a stamp. But if you have it all the way towards the horizon, then a, the simple object shadow from a stamp might not suffice. It might disconnect from the object. It might not portray the right direction of it. And so you'll have to end up using a different tool. And the way that I go about doing cast shadows, at least more complex shapes like buildings and things like that, is I use 
the shape tool. The shape tool is perfect for that. So let's go over that. I hope the basics are pretty simple. You get the general idea. The closer to the horizon, the more elongated the shadow is. The closer to noon or high noon is when the shadows are going to be less elongated. So it's actually pretty simple. It's not too complex. Just remember that simple rule of thumb. The closer it is to noon, less elongated. The closer it is, the more it's going to be elongated. So that's that's the simplicity of it. Now I'm going to copy and paste this shadow, this thing right here, because I want to bring it into the map so that we can kind of go over it. Let's cover um, the basic stuff. So let's go over to trees. And I'm going to select all of these trees right here. So just like I said, when the shadow is not elongated, I'm going to go to custom object shadow. When I'm moving this out of the way, you can kind of see it. You can see the shadow doesn't move anywhere to the horizon or on the vertical offset. That's just top down as if it was noon. If you wanted to show the shadow being closer to around, be a little bit closer, let's say, uh, let's say that west is on the left side and you wanted to show closer to, oh, well, maybe 1 p.m., 3 p.m., things like that, the more the shadow is going to be elongated. Now, the problem is, is that there comes a point where the shadows disconnect from the objects. I mentioned that earlier. So obviously an object shadow is only gonna work within specific times of the day. Otherwise, you're gonna be a little out of luck because you're gonna have that disconnect. So that's when you'll start to decide to start using other tools like the shape tool or stamps. And I'll show you how to do elongated shadows using stamps. So this is pretty simple stuff. It's not complex. So just remember, closer to noon, the shadows are gonna be more like this. And you're gonna to wanna to determine what exactly is north, south, and east, and west, by the way. And that's not too complex. Once you've established where north is, the rest of the directions come clear. So the way that I'm describing this is horizontal. The sun is going from left to right. There's no angle going on. It's just a perfect line going from left to right of the screen. You can change that up if you want it to be where the light source is somewhere else, okay? But just remember that one trick. Object shadows are only gonna work in between the middle of the day or around the middle of the day. They're not very helpful when you get to dawn or dusk or 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Things like that, the shadows are gonna be disconnected again from the object. So now the other thing that you can do um, is, is that when it comes to trees, you can use other stamps to act as shadows. So let's stick with something easy, a simple tree. If I go to Fantasy Regional and I just pick a tree that works for me, let's just type in tree. These are pine trees, I believe these big green things right here. And so you can use a stamp to act as a shadow. This is pretty easy stuff. You're just gonna go ahead and drop the brightness. You're gonna bring the opacity down. And I usually have it, I mean, depending how much you want the shadow, dark the shadow to be, I usually set it around 50 or so. And then you simply need to choose the direction of the shadow. So for here, because I've established the left is going to be west, then this is gonna act more like it's um, elongated towards dusk instead of dawn. If it was the other way around, then it would be this way. This would be dawn, okay? If, if west was in a different direction, if north was at top, then the shadow would look like this. So not complex, but using stamps is a great trick because you don't want to take the time to make every single leaf, every single branch. It's just going to be very difficult for you. So using a stamp, especially fantasy regional stamps, Use those stamps, those trees, and then just darken them and drop the opacity. And just make sure that all the stamps are below it. Now, there's another thing as well that you have to do when you factor it in. And that is, is that one side of the tree is going to be darker than the other, right? Now, right here, it's underneath. So what you'll then have to do is going to have to go over to the shape tool. You're going to use the brush. You're going to choose a black fill, and you're going to blur it. Now, let's just apply it first real quick to see how it looks. There we go. I'm going to select it. Let's bring the blur up a little bit more. There we go. And let's bring the opacity down. I think I had it around 50. So let's drop it to around there. Let's see here. I think that looks about good. So I've established that this is going to be my shadow. I'm going to favorite that immediately. This right here. So that when I switch over to my favorites, there it is right there. And now I have it easily accessible because I'm going to be using it a lot. So now that I have that, I can go in again, take the brush. Let's bring the size down. And we're going to go ahead and just create the shadow that's going to go on top of this. And it looks like it's down, so we'll bring it up a layer. There we go. And now you have the shadow that's affected because one side of the tree is 
in direct sunlight. The other side of the tree is blocked by the sunlight. So now you have the shadow on the tree as well as the cast shadow that's on the surface. So very simple stuff. And you can easily just select both of these and just rotate them. And now you have the proper shadow that you would want to use. Okay, so just when you think about it, it works out pretty well. So individual trees, bushes, pretty easy stuff, not complex. Let's go ahead and remove uh, these shadows. I don't need these anymore. Let's go to trees. So you kind of get the general idea. There's the simple stuff. What about something a little bit more complex when you can't use a stamp to act as a shadow? Because this building, this structure right here that I've built, doesn't, there is no stamp that's probably going to match and the perspective wouldn't work either. So then you'll have to create your own. Now, the way that this works is not, too, is not complex. The first and most important thing is you have to establish that light source, right? Which direction is the light? That's like the very first thing. And I'm just going to make it easy for now, but I'm just going to, like I said, left to right, or we can have the shadow go this way. You'll notice that the roofs right here have um, shadows baked into them. So it might not be a bad idea to stay with continuity. So now I'm kind of wedged into this position where I have to have a shadow and a light source in a certain direction, and that's okay. You'll have to change and edit some of these roof stamps to be lighter or darker or put shadow on top of them if you want to change that, okay? But let's just follow the roof shadows. So the light source is obviously facing going this way, okay? That's the direction the light source is going in. So that's what we're going to be doing for the shadow as well, okay? So then we'll go ahead and take the shape tool. I'm going to go over to my favorites. Let's see here. Do I have my favorites in here? Okay, here we go. Favorites, yep. Uh, let's see, favorites, this one right here. Okay. Now, just so you know, when you hold down the control key, what it does is it snaps. What's going to happen is it's going to snap at 15 degree angles or so. Now, this is very helpful because sometimes you have to do all this line work to... Uh, make sure that the shadows line up. But if you hold down that control key, you, it will go in 15 degree increments. And that's going to be very, very helpful because it's easier to work with these increments than try to remember where you were. So remember to use those increments by holding down the shift key and then rotate like this. Okay. Now, since that's there, let's just go ahead and take these arrows just to verify the angle that I have here, because this is all that's going to be casting a shadow. So I have that there. Step one. Now I want to cast the shadow. So what I'll do is I'll select an edge. Let's go ahead and move this arrow out of the way so you can kind of see it. Now I do want to mention that shadows are going to interact on different surfaces. So you notice that this, this building is on top of like a hill or a cliff or an embankment. It's higher up. So the shadow is going to react differently or interact differently with that than the flat surface, okay? So this is kind of hard to explain, but you'll get the general idea once I start adding to it. So let's make sure that I pick that right one. I'm gonna click and then put that shift key, or the, sorry, not shift, control key, like this. And I'm gonna interact by just following the shape a little bit. And then I can go back to holding down control and then you notice that the lines that are here, I can line up the line with the corner. You can see this line right here as it lines up with the corner of the structure. And then I can go up. Hold down that control key. Use those lines to line up with this corner. And then you can make, and what's really nice about this is you don't have to make a perfect circle. And the reason why is because we're gonna blur this shadow. So I'll just single click without using the control key like this, and then I'll hold down this, and I'm gonna line it up with the edge. Now you notice that that line right there lines up all the way across, and that's gonna be very, very helpful. So I'll click that, okay. All right, all right, I'm gonna press enter, okay. Now, when you first have the shadow there, don't get confused. First, you make sure your blur is on, and then you're going to want to drop that opacity. I'm going to put it around 50. Okay, so now you have a dr nice drop 
or a nice cast shadow here. But there's more to it than that. What happens if I want to show how that a building is taller or shorter? Right now, I've made the shadow of the foundation in which the structure is on. But if you want to show the cast shadow from the that square building and that circular building right there, you're going to have to add a more elongated shadow because the way to show height is it, when you have a directional or cast shadow is to have the shadow be longer because it's to show height. So let's go over that, shall we? Now I've got it set to merge shape and that's not a problem, okay? It's okay if the shadows merge. So what we'll do is we'll start right here and we're gonna hold down control. And when it comes to pitch, by the way, let's quickly do something real quick. I wanna make sure that I explain pitch real quick of a roof because some people might confuse like, hey, um, how do I show the roof as a shadow? Okay, so first, you have to know what the pitch of the roof is. What I generally do is I create a little diagram that kind of shows the pitch of the roof. And so that this way I can kind of figure out what the roof is going to look like as a cast shadow. Now, if the roof is like this, then the shadow won't be quite as angular. But if it was, say, something like this, where it's a lot higher pitch, the roof pitch is much higher, then you're going to want to translate that into the roof, right? And these roofs are they all go into a pitch like a tower piece. So they're not going to make any weird shapes or anything, but these are the basics. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. We're gonna choose that shadow. We're gonna start here. Don't forget to use that control key, hold that down because you wanna make sure that you stay within the same angle. You don't want your shadows going in different angles. That's gonna look really weird. So you wanna show some kind of continuity. So I wanna show that there's some height. Let's start with something basic first like this. We'll stop it at the corner of that square building. And then I want to show that the tower is fairly tall. So I can push this angle here. Oh, actually, I'm off by just a little bit here. My mistake. Push it up. There we go. Just the angle of the circular roof. Push this out. This is just a simple way. We'll go into something more complex. You're just using the lines. Press enter like this, okay. Oopsie, it didn't go on the lower opacity. There we go, let's go up here. There we go. Okay, that looks a little too dark. You might just set it up a little bit. That's 57, no wonder. Bring that down. Okay, now setting it to merge shapes will be helpful. It will make sure that the shadows stay connected and that way you're not overlapping because what happens is, is if you don't have that merge on, um, the shadows will build on top of each other. And now in real life, that, that does happen, but it looks odd in an orthographic projection, in my opinion. So you don't have to worry about um, having the shadows overlap. People, I've heard users complain a little bit about, oh, I don't like that the shadows overlap. Totally understandable. So just if you have it, merge shapes. Just make sure that any other shapes that you have on that same layer, you're gonna to wanna to lock them so you don't accidentally merge them. So that nice roof piece or that uh, wall that you made for that foundation doesn't accidentally turn into a, a shadow, okay? So that's the basics. Now, if you don't, if you want the shadow to be, um, to be a little more elongated, then that's not too complex. You just start at the top here and then you can go in and make it more elongated. That's up to you. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just rotate this a little bit. Where is my rotation? Is it set to one second here? Where is my preview? I don't have it. Okay. One second here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and what happened to my thing here? One moment. Let's go ahead and create a straight line here. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Now I can go ahead and take that drop shadow or that shadow. Start at the corner here go here and go here, press enter, merge, and now you have a more elongated shadow. So it, that means that the pitch of the roof is much, much steeper, right? And if I go undo, the pitch of the roof is not. There's a kind of a 90s there. I don't really care for the 90 degree angle, but adding that in will change up the pitch. So just have to factor that in. So drop shadows are not complex, but they are terribly helpful in showing, again, the, the time of the day. And that may become important to you as a DM, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So not complex. So this stuff's pretty easy, okay? Those are the basics for that. Let's go ahead and 
do an interior. It's a little bit more complex. There's generally a little more going on in interior. Let's check the time. 20 minutes, perfect. Let's go ahead and remove um, the, the roof, my bad. Select the roof, turn the, the opacity off, okay. Now, I didn't put a whole lot of stamps in here because I wanted to create some lee room. I wanted some people to kind of mention a couple things within a house in which they have trouble uh, creating a shadow for. So it's kind of bare. So if anyone has suggestions about, oh, I don't I, I don't know how to do um, a, a cast shadow for a crate or a person lying on the floor, any of that stuff, okay? We'll, we'll show you how to go about doing that. Now, I'm going to stick um, with the same direction up that the... That we had before so we'll go ahead and just click hold on shift there's that angle yep barrels we'll cover barrels don't worry okay so this is the direction that we're going in right here so this is where the light source is and when it comes into the window so we'll go ahead and use some lines here to kind of see in which where the light is coming from so this section, this lane right here in between these two is where the light is coming from. So we want to maybe put an object in that band of light so you can kind of see. Now when it comes to um, directional shadows with an interior, there's so much things for light to bounce off in a smaller space that there's usually not going to be hard, hard shadows um, that are going to be everywhere. What you'll end up discovering is, is that because there's little space and a lot of objects for light to bounce off of, you don't have to have um, the light be completely directional. The light can flood in through a window and then it can fill up a room. So you don't have to create um, these hard shadows everywhere within a structure. I hope that makes sense. So let's just start with the basics first. Oh yeah, we'll cover chairs and tables as well. Let's go over the basic stuff. So here's the light source coming in. And you'd want to know, how is it that you kind of portray that? All right, so the easiest one is to use an object shadow. And this can be useful just depending on which way the light is coming from. So this is it may not always be useful to use an object shadow. But an object shadow is one way to do it. And you'll see the problem here is that the shadow doesn't connect onto the corners there. So you could just use the shape tool to fill in those sections or just use the shape tool yourself. So that's because the shadow is not connecting to the corners of um, the crate, we should probably use the shape tool. So let's do that. I'm gonna lock this shape, this wooden walls right here so I don't accidentally select it. And I'll just click, oopsie, let's go over to favorites, my mistake, there we go. And I'm gonna follow the shape Let's go here. And what's really nice is you can use the line work to your advantage here. Okay, we get the shape in here. Oop, didn't go far enough, my mistake. There we go, okay. And then just go right here, follow the edge, enter shadow here. Now, be now because the shadow is different, uh, we might have to adjust some of the blur settings. And I will say that sometimes there's gonna be a difference between a hard shadow and a more blurry shadow. So if a light source is closer to an object, like the sun is so far away, but because light is filtering in just through that window right there or a candle or whatever it might be, the closer the light source is to an object, the harder the, the edges of the shadow will be. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So if the light source is very close, the harder the shadow. The farther the light source is, the more blurred the edges of the shadow will be. So just kind of factor that in. So really just following the shape will help you out quite a bit, okay? All right, there are some other things that you can do as well. Remember I mentioned just using an object as a shadow? You can totally do that, right? You can drop the brightness down, change the blur, bring the opacity down, and then you can just connect these, just kind of zoom in, connect these, just make sure the angle is right. I got it off there. There we go, like this. And you can just kind of use the crate itself as a shadow. It's up to you. I don't think that the line works properly. I think this works better, but you can, depending on the object, 
you can use the object itself. Same thing when we used um, the fantasy regional tree. That worked fine. It just depends. Certain objects will work better than others, okay? Now, I've seen in here that we've got a barrel and we have chairs and a table. Let's cover that, okay? Let's change up the light source as well. We'll have some fun and just change the light source. So I'll change these two lines here and we'll rotate it this way a little bit. Just say the light source is here. There we go. Okay. Let's go do table, crates, that kind of stuff. So let's cover that. Go back into the interior here. We'll delete this. Oops, not the whole thing. <laughs> Where are we for time? Oh, cool. Playing in time. Go back into the interior. We'll go ahead and delete this stuff. Okay. All right, so let's do a barrel. First, we got to look for a top-down barrel. There you go. Oopsie, that's Fantasy Regional. We'll go back to Fantasy Battle Maps. Let's grab this one, and let's grab this one. Let's do this one instead. Okay. For this one, I'm not going to draw it. I'm just going to use a shadow, okay? So what I'll do is I'll use this. I want to, sh to make sure that the top kind of lines up to make sure it's around the right shape, because this is the top of the barrel. I want to make sure this is scaled to the same width of the top of the barrel. Okay, let's put a barrel right here. And then let's grab this. We'll turn the custom shadow off, bring the brightness down, bring the opacity down to around 50. And we'll take it down a level as well. And then you just place it right here. Let's just make sure that I have it at the right angle. I think that looks good. Just line it up with the line there. And then you can just place the barrel just like that. There you go. So super easy. Projecting a barrel is not complex, whichever direction that it's kind of going in. Now, if it's so close to dusk or dawn, you probably wouldn't get this much of a cast shadow because the sun would be below the window length or it might be behind some trees that are over here in the distance. So you might want to bring it in a little bit more because um, there's just so many things that get in the way. There might be objects, landscape, terrain that's blocking um, the light from filtering in. So just kind of factor that in here. It depends on how much thinking that you want to do. That you just really want to stick with a certain direction. You want to stick with certain types of shadows, whether it's going to be an object shadow, a stamp itself, or using the shape tool. It just depends. But just know that when you're doing directional shadows or cast shadows, it's a lot more work. So I don't, <laughs> I don't recommend doing it for every single map just when you um, are <laughs> doing a specific type of map where you're trying to portray a time of day, okay? What else do we have here? So crate, barrel, pretty easy stuff, not complex, super easy. Let me go check in the list here. There was chairs and tables. Great, let's do that. Let's add in chairs. Let's add in chairs here. Let's see here, a simple chair right here. Let's just stick with this one right here. Okay, so you have a simple chair right here. And I see that there's even a hole is that a hole in the chair? No, no, it's just part of the wood. Okay. This one is a little bit more, um, maybe a little more complex because you're trying to create um, the shape of the tool of the of the chair. So you're going to want to show the legs of the chair. You're going to want to show some of the seat, and you're going to want to show the back where you rest your back up against. Okay, and that will be a little more complex. I don't think that's quite as easy. And so the way that I generally go about this is a couple things. And you can use stamps at a lower opacity. You can change the blend mode. You can use other stamps here. It just depends on what you're going for. Let's try a couple methods here. Just see which one out works the best, okay? Let's go ahead and grab some poles that are going to be acting as the legs of the chair. I'm gonna construct a shadow just using stamps for right now, okay? So custom, we're gonna go none color, bring the brightness down, and of course it's set to 50. It's going to be set to, let's bring it down a layer, bring the opacity down. And now these shadows are going to overlap. Just kind of keep that in mind here. So there will be some overlapping, and I'll show you how to fix that. So we're going to have that first. And then the next step is we probably could just use this itself to act as the shadow. Now if, so because there's no um, because the, the seat and the back connect together, I don't have to show a space in between. And so the shadow doesn't have to be having some light in between it. So I'll bring the brightness down. We'll bring this down. Now you see that the shadows do overlap. 
just kind of fat, just note the shadows will overlap. And what I will sometimes do is I'll follow this method. Now that I've created the shadow, now I can group it. Create group. We're going to call it shadow guide. And now I'm going to use the shape tool to create it. Pretty easy stuff. So I'll go ahead and just take the shape and I'm going to use the pen. And I'm just going to follow trace all around these edges like this. Pretty easy stuff. Don't have to be perfect there. Here we go. Almost there. All right. There we go. Okay. Press enter. Add. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now we can just get rid of this. We don't need um, this anymore. Our guide is gone. This works great. And then I can just place this right here. Now you can have, what's great about this is I had the legs long for a reason so that I can change up the shadow. Yeah, it doesn't look like a hole, but I can't tell it might be a hole. Um, and you know, we can, we can fix that. I can show you how to do that. So just make sure the shadows connect. You see how the shadow connects like that. Okay. And what we can do with this, it's not too complex. We can just go in to make sure that the merge shape is on. Okay, that's great. And then we can go over to this. We're going to go to subtract. We're going to make it nice and small. Oops, it doesn't really get, so that gets really small. It doesn't get very small. So we'll make it nice and big. That way the uh, subtract br brush will work properly. Okay. So if I go back over to here, subtract, there we go. That looks better. It looks like it's an oval shape. And then I can go in. Let me just see where that shape is. It's right about here. There we go. Go in, delete. Scale it back down. Just make sure that it fits the shape. And then there's your hole in the chair. So not complex. It's pretty easy stuff. Now, I mean, it can get more complex if this chair was like this, then the shadow is going to be different. So just kind of know that. I'm not going to go into more complex stuff. I just want to stick with this with the basics first. If you guys like um if you guys like this, you want more advanced shadowing, we could totally do like an advanced or a masterclass on more advanced shadow work today. I'm just sticking with the basics. Let's see where we're at for time. 30 minutes. That's great. We'll probably go for another 10 minutes. Is there anybody, anything else that, um, oh yeah, we still have it. We still have a table. Let's do that. Okay. And it's the method is really the same for me. So let's go ahead and delete that and we'll remove that. Let's go add a table. Okay, we could do the plant. Yeah, let's do the plant. How would I go about doing a plant? This one, it, 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 I mean, it's really, it's as simple as a drop as using the uh, custom object shadow. This is not complex. So unless you wanted to show a stem, if it's elongated enough, you want to show the stem connecting into the pot. And I think that's probably what you're, what you're thinking of. So let's do that. First, we'll go ahead and put a pot underneath. And I think we could just use this. This will work just fine. We're going to scale it down. We'll go ahead and put this on top of it. And I'm going to move it a little bit this way so you can see the crate underneath. Okay. Now, the, you probably won't be able to see much of the crate. That's okay. So first things first, we want to create all the different things that are in the shadow. So we'll use the objects to create the shadows. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And then we're going to remove the custom shadows, bring the brightness down. Bring the opacity down and we'll blur a little bit. There we go. Okay. And I think, what do I have the opacity at? It looks a little low. Let's go a little bit higher. There we go. Okay. Step one complete. We're going to have the shadow elongated. Move it this way. We're going to go ahead and just take the pole, just like we did before, and put it right there like that. The pole is just going to act as the trunk or the stem. And you place it up against like this. Okay. So what we'll do again is we'll go ahead and just boop, do this. Now, I think it is possible that you could just leave it as this because it really just depends. You could just leave it here, create group. Like right here, we can take the shadow. The only issue is, is that I do see that you can see a little bit of the shadow right here. You can disconnect that by just putting it right next to it. And that way they're not overlapping. And you can overlap the crate shadow with the pole because the leaves are hiding it. 
So this is pretty much how you would create the shadow like that. All right. So it's not complex. So, you know, drop shadow, I mean, not drop shadows, but um, these, this can be really complex. Um, and that just depends on how far you want to go with it, or you can make it simplified. Just know that don't worry about focusing on all of the different perspective and all this stuff. Remember, the fantasy battle map style is a top-down 2D orthographic projection. That's the way the art is. So, sure, some of the art and the style has some perspective in them, but the, the style as a whole is orthographic. It doesn't have perspective, so you don't have to focus on making sure that the perspective is right because the style itself is not does not have perspective, okay? If we have a style that eventually includes perspective, then it kind of makes sense to have the shadows have perspective as well. Don't give yourself more work. I personally think it would be a little odd if the shadows were had like two or three point perspective while the stamps were orthographic. That would be really odd to me. So let's not do that, right? Okay, so now you've kind of figured out how to do that. The plant, not complex. Again, getting easier and easier. Let's do something a little bit more, more complex, right? We got a little bit more time left. Let's do that. Let's go do that desk. Okay, let me show you how to do that. I hope you're finding this helpful. Let's go do the, do a desk. So how would I go about um, creating a desk? Let's do that. Desk. Uh, let's go with a simple desk. Let's go table. Go with something simple. Nothing complex. Uh, let's go use this. We'll just actually use this after all. But I'll kind of make it a little bit smaller. Don't want it to be massive. So I'll go custom none. And I'm going to just shrink it down a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And we can rotate it at any angle that you want. It doesn't really matter. First, I'll create the ambient occlusion. And that's going to be the object shadow. That ambient occlusion is just going to make this thing look like it's not connected to the ground or on the ground directly. So using that ambient occlusion is helpful to create this illusion of depth, but it's not all of the shadowing. It's just to show that object as it is above the ground or not lying on the ground. So that ambient occlusion is very helpful. So we'll, we'll do that first. So whatever direction I want the table to be in. So then what I'll do is that you can't see, obviously you can't see um, the pegs or the legs of the table. So we'll have to follow this method again of using um, these right here to represent the legs. We'll go ahead and make sure that this is lined up properly with the guided lines that we have. We're going to copy, paste, put this one here, put this one here. We'll put it down a layer. And then we'll go ahead and turn this one off. Brightness. Okay, all of these can actually go down a little bit. I think we'll want to stick it around 50. Let's set the blur. There we go. All right, great. Okay. And now, depending on how the tall, tall the table is, if the table is not tall, then you can push the shadow inward. If the table is very tall, then obviously the shadow of the table is going to be further away. Why? Because it's taller, right? So if you just want to show the height of the object, so you can go and push this in, and then we can just move these so they're not overlapping. You see when they overlap, they create some shadow there. You can easily avoid that. Just put them on the edge so they're not actually overlapping and yet they're still connected. We'll push this up a layer and then you have your pegs. So it's 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 not complex. It's pretty easy stuff. Maybe I wanted to show let's do something more complex. Let's put a let's put um, something on top of the table. So that way we can kind of create a little shadow there as well. So we have this right here. Custom object shadow. We'll bring the blur down a little bit, bring the intensity up, and just follow the same kind of shape here. Well, I think the shadow's a little, intensity is a little too high. I gotta bring it way down. Bring the blur down. There we go. And you'll see the complexity of the shadow. So just be sure to establish the direction of where the light is, and that way you know which direction. Uh, the shadows are being projected. You're going to want to have surfaces. That's going to be the ground. And then just don't forget all the objects. So really, cast shadows are not complex. It's just taking the time to piece together the shadow of an individual object. The more complex the object is, the more work it is to make the shadow correct. 
Um, just know that you do have the shape tool that makes life so much easier. Again, you can use stamps. Stamps are incredibly useful. You can use the object shadow settings. Those work great as well. Okay. So I feel like that is the end of the stream. We've kind of covered all the simple basic stuff. There's a heck of a lot more complex stuff that we could do. And if you guys want to have a more complex stream, please let me know. Don't forget that we do have a stream canny request uh, page. And if you want to see a more complex shadows, and I'll have to do a little bit of uh, research myself to make sure that I'm showing you all the complex uh, techniques as well. But I think you guys get the basics. And I think this was pretty, pretty good. I think it was pretty helpful. All right. Well, hey, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. We kept it kind of nice and short today. I like that, keeping it nice and easy. I only have just like a real quick uh, um, announcements. Probably by the end of the summer, um, there'll probably be more content being added to this to the channel so likely there'll be more either there'll be more streams one or two streams a week or we'll have more clips being added throughout the week um and then we might be moving our master class session that we have on our discord server over uh to twitch as well because i feel some of the power users are kind of wanting to um, be able to watch recorded uh, master classes instead of having to make it to the live event over on our discord channel since i'm not recording them so those are kind of the news that we've got going on there all right thank you everyone so much really appreciate it so glad that we got to do this together and i will see you very very soon okay avita zane and mary matt bye everyone